Tell me, what are, what are some of the most um, surprising things you found out? Because you were on the activism side. Now you are on the governance side. What are some of the surprising things that you found out? Besides, I read somewhere talking about how the huge staff in the civil service, yes. that's a big surprise yeah. to you. Yeah, we have um, a huge staff um, that do not necessarily, um, our manpower needs is beyond what we have um, within the authority. Uh, also, one of the in interesting things I realize is we have all these third party agreements that are skewed in favor of the private sector. So the government signs on to all manners of agreements that you can clearly see that the government is struck change. So one of the things we're doing is reviewing such agreements, and this is one of the agreements, the Intel's agreement, whereby, you know, TSA compliance, we can't accept non-compliance on all of such. So one of the challenges we're having is reviewing all our agreements because a lot of them are, are, are skewed in a way. And once you want to review agreements, then people jump up and say, oh, you're discouraging investors. Oh, by the way, um, we're having job losses. So if an investor wants to come to your country and he feels he cannot comply with the rules and Maybe regulations, he take his then money he might away. Yeah. What we seek to provide is to, to have a level playing field, have a strong regulatory environment that protects the government and indeed the private sector. Is it possible, though, that Intel felt they were indispensable? Well, I think uh, maybe to a certain extent, they probably felt that um, we couldn't go the whole hawk in getting them to comply. It probably came as a rude shock to them that this girl is actually <laughs> going, <laughs> you know, going yeah. through insisting mm -hmm. on compliance. But I think it's, it's for them to appreciate that um, whatever you think you have been doing, now is the time to comply. You mm -hmm. cannot just function in isolation. And what is wrong with complying to TSA? No, seriously? What is wrong with paying money into the coffers of the government? You what should, is wrong with giving us an invoice and we pay you? You should be telling me. Yeah, so I've told them that, that this is the position. Why would a private company refuse to comply? What is it? Did they try to bribe you? Well, um, I made it very clear to them <laughs> that if anyone is collecting anything on my behalf, you should know that they're not bringing anything to me. So <clears throat> this is, I'm not accepting anything. I take exception to anyone trying to in any way portray or, or communicate that. So when you were appointed as the MP, what was your brief? What did you set out to do? Did you mm. feel like, ah, oh, this is a huge responsibility? Mm. Mm. It is a huge responsibility, but I set out to identify critical reform initiatives that will drive. Mm -hmm. Indeed, you can't take on everything. You prioritize the institutional reforms you're going to do. And I had my key areas. I had my short-term, medium-term, and long-term plans. We've been able to do one year. A um, significant amount of what we sought to achieve in one year have been achieved. We've restructured the organization. We have a new organizational structure that recognizes our role as a landlord port. Uh, we've also um, initiated our review of the concession agreements, which we're, we're going ahead to do. We've also felt the need to prioritize and ensure that um, our access into our waterways are, are as efficient as possible. Deployment of navigational aids, ensuring that the depth of our channels are, are, are as I, I, required. But, I mean, Nigerians will score you quite high. I don't know whether they're being kind to you. How mm. would you score yourself? Well, I'll score myself as average. I, I I, I, I think um, when you... Average be like 55, Yeah, 60. yeah, we need to do more. It's, it's, I always say it's like I'm pushing a train, I'm swimming against the tide, uh -huh. because for everything you try to do, it's quite um, a lot of, a bit, bit of effort, an issue. Effort. Yes, even within the, I think, the staff are also not used to working at the pace that I walk. So the turn around time... Sometimes. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm at work on my desk by 8, and then I walk till um, 6 o'clock, I leave, I close 6 so I can get home for, to, to be with my kids. I hear you take your files home. Yes, I do. I have homework. <laughs> well, so I have a suitcase of homework I'm that I take. I'm going to take a break home. and return because I had asked people to send some questions. I take a break and return and take some of those questions and also talk about bringing back our girls. Yeah. I'll be right back. So the first question that we must respond to is what we're coming back to. That's Bolanri Aro. She says, what prepared you for where you are today? Well, um, <clears throat> Besides what we've talked about. I think the job I had done before. Can I just say, for example, one yes. of the things is the fact that you're an A1 student in economics. Well, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I mean, I'm because a, that was one of the subjects you were excellent at. Yes, yes, right. I'm excellent. I, I, I had an A1 in economics. And I'm really an, an average student. I'm not just one of those people that just, uh, I have an A1 in economics. You were never always first in class. I was never always first in class. I remain fifth, fourth, third. Mm -hmm. For that sort of but thing. But with economics and yeah, English. economics, yes, yeah, I'm an A1 in that, in, in those two subjects. But what is important is being hardworking, being committed, being dedicated, knowing that um, you have to apply yourself in totality. It's very okay. difficult, um, mm -hmm. but I think it, you just need to do it. And being chief of staff, I read everything the governor read. 
So you can imagine the quantum of paperwork. So it prepared me for any magnitude of paperwork. You're still not wearing glasses. I am actually. I started wearing. I do wear. Because with all the what work you have I to do, do your yes. eyes will begin. Yes, with to... MPA in the last one year, now I wear glasses. That's why then. Yes. Okay. Says so how is the Post Authority revamping to gain more grants economically? Yes. Um, we are um, seeking to enhance exportation. We've done priority desk to consider exportation of agri produce and solid minerals. We felt the need to look at exportation beyond importation to see how we can um, get more of um, Nigerian produce taking out of the country. So this is one of the things um, we have sought to do. Have you, have you addressed the issue of multiple agencies at the port? Um, multiple, we, we, That's from me. Yeah, <laughs> we, we are host to that. We've made yeah. recommendation to uh -huh. the uh, Presidential Council on Ease of Doing Business on the need to streamline the agencies. But in order to do that, what we what we are pushing for is to have the ports community system and the national single windows. Those are electronic platforms that will enable all these agencies of government plug into the operations. That way, they don't need to physically be there. Haha, <laughs> the physical one has its benefits. I'm well, sure. yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we discourage that. And um, with the executive orders that were issued by the then acting president on um, domiciling single operations on inspection, that has really sort of sanitized to a certain extent the agencies of government that are operating in the ports. What we seek what we sought to do was to comply to the old directive of those that had permission to be in the ports. Yeah. So that's just to sort mm -hmm. of remind people, if you're not part of this list, you have no business being in the port. Tell me why the road was a priority for you. Sorry? The road, the access. Oh, no, you, you, you access road is key because cargo evacuation is important. You can't have a situation where um, your cargo evacuation is, is non-effective non because anyone bringing in cargo, all he wants is, mm -hmm. wh when does my cargo get to my warehouse or my shop or my house? Mm -hmm. So that whole value chain of transportation is critical. So access roads are, are you know, beyond important. So we, we're seeking to have, um, have multiple intermodal transportation mm -hmm. system on cargo evacuation. Have in rail using our inland waters mm -hmm. not relying 100 percent on mm -hmm. road because what we have now is the same 90 percent of our cargo is being evacuated by road how about encouraging more ports across the country well we, people wonder why the federal government hasn't done enough of that well the, the port locations are adequate to a certain extent we need to have um, locations for deep sea port we're doing a 25 year um, port development master plan which is going to guide the development of ports across the country but you know with 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 port um, activities it's cargo of choice the consignee decides where he wants, he wants to take to his get, cargo yeah, but so, there's competition for you they yeah. won't come to you all the time yeah, so we need to have um, we're deploying standardized to a certain extent um, infrastructure across, across all port locations so if you for example want to go to Calabar you should know that um, the depth will yes. allow your your, mm -hmm. your vessel to be able to come in there adequate navigational aids and when you come you'd be able to evacuate your cargo